On August 11, 1995, a successful debt for development agreement was signed between the Philippine and Swiss governments. The Foundation for a Sustainable Society Incorporated, FSSI, was organized. Less than a month later, on September 6, 1995, FSSI was formally registered. With a starting fund of 454.8 million pesos, half the amount of the Philippines' export credit debt to Switzerland, FSSI was tasked to finance sustainable development projects for marginalized sectors. FSSI was born into a positive environment, with the Philippines becoming an emerging economy. In its first year of operations, it became the first Philippine institution to provide guarantee facilities to micro and cottage enterprises. The following year, with its search for partners, products, and technology, hampered by the financial crisis in Asia and the onset of El Nino, FSSI adopted a more focused and prudent approach in program development and implementation. From 1998 to the year 2000, with government and non-government institutions already engaged in financing, the foundation focused on the development and promotion of ecosystem-based enterprises that exemplify its standards of community orientation, ecological soundness, and financial viability. Despite the political and economic unrest at the start of the decade, FSSI continued to pursue creative strategies to extend and increase assistance to community-based enterprises. In its sixth year, in partnership with the Netherlands Organization for International Development Cooperation, it opened the Fund for Sustainable Civil Society, a grants facility for projects focused on service delivery and livelihood development of poor and marginalized sectors. In 2002, FSSI adopted a renewed mission to be the leading eco-enterprise resource institution catering to marginalized communities throughout the country. Various committees were also created to enable FSSI members to take a more active role in shaping organizational policies. The following year, the Swiss government made a most gracious exit from the FSSI board, an indication of its trust in the directions of the organization. I think FSSI started off with a degree of skepticism from most governments that were involved because they were not sa working with NGOs you know, 25 years ago. So, it was a the negotiation. So, it was very challenging. But at the same time, really exciting because you were giving birth to an organization that you hoped would last a long time and that uh, was the fruit of different organizations in different in two different countries you know? and we had to be able to say we are we are trustworthy as an organization this was a professional undertaking as far as the swiss NGOs it was an advocacy undertaking so uh, you know, that was really a highlight of knowing how international cooperation between uh, NGOs can work uh, and uh, uh, with uh, telecommunications as uh, the only <laughs> as the only tool <laughs> and, uh, and uh, communication uh, transparency uh, that's very important we very transparent we are also very transparent with them as far as uh, the problems uh, that we were facing uh, etc and the challenges in the same year, FSSI adopted its first logo, representing Synergy and its mission to help uplift Filipino communities. A seven-year medium-term development plan was crafted in 2004 to guide the foundation towards its goal to become the leading resource institution for eco-enterprises. It also increased support for the triple bottom lines as the standard for entrepreneurship among members and partners and shifted its focus to sectors mainly coconut choir, microfinance, solid waste management, and other emerging eco-enterprises. FSSI also launched its website to keep members and partners updated on the Foundation's work and initiatives. In 2006, the Environmental Management Accounting was adopted to encourage partners to monitor their environmental performance by identifying and measuring environmental aspects crucial in their operation. 
FSSI also decided to increase its stake in the Coco Choir subsector by acquiring the Soriano Multipurpose Fiber Corporation, now the Pilipinas Eco Fiber Corporation, as a fully owned subsidiary. The following year, it crafted an environmental management policy that served as a practical guide for the development portfolio unit in engaging with partners. In 2009, a new logo was adopted to represent the organization's work on enterprise development through synergy with a broad range of partners. The following year, the Star Trek project was launched in partnership with the Foundation for Philippine Environment and the Peace and Equity Foundation, with the twin goal of poverty reduction and environment conservation in Rojas, Palawan. The Forest Foundation Philippines would later on join the consortium and the project replicated in the municipality of San Vicente. In 2011, the triple bottom line local economy and ecosystem development framework was adopted to bring together social enterprises in critical and complementary value chains. The foundation also shifted from the subsector to focus area-based program in recognition of the need to advance sustainable development goals beyond the limits of enterprise and value chain concepts. FSSI co-convened the Poverty Reduction Through Social Entrepreneurship or Present Coalition, an advocacy alliance which pushed for the Magna Carta for social enterprises. In 2013, FSSI started to direct its resources to poor and fragile ecosystems in Palawan, Isabela, and Sorsogon in pursuit of its 3BL LED agenda. A festive celebration of FSSI's 20th anniversary was held with partners in Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. By its 20th year, FSSI's fund balance had grown to 910 million, double the original amount, and served over 200 enterprises and communities in the Philippines. The following year, it shifted its investment allocation to a reversed 40 to 60 ratio for its commercial and development portfolio. The three-year plan for 2017 to 2019 was developed to deepen the 3BL performance of social enterprise partners by strengthening SE consortiums and expanding value chain collaboration in four areas. A new organizational structure was adopted by the end of 2018 and implemented starting 2019. This shifted from area to function based. In 2019, FSSI was included in the Project Steering Committee of the Department of Trade and Industries Rapid Growth Project. In its 25th year, FSSI launched its five-year strategic plan with continued focus on empowering communities through enterprises that promote triple bottom line and a refined vision, mission, and core values. So we still, you know, board, board members and board of trustees that, um, you know, core values are not just your vision, mission, statement, and core values. Hindi lang yan na iiwang nakapaskil sa sa pader uh, o kaya nakasulat sa sa brochure um, sinasabuhay yun eh uh, and and I think yun yung mas mahirap for any NGO uh, for any foundation uh, that the um, ako that what remains to be a challenge is 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 how best to true to your to an organization's mission. Uh, given this kind of a pandemic, you, you never stop thinking. Uh, you never stop, you know, asking yourselves how can how can you be of better service to, you know, the people that you have promised uh, that you will serve.